In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to build a 200 watt capable solar power system. And this is considered the minimalist solar package in my book and on my website. And I want to teach you guys how to build this thing from scratch, step by step. And this is a great size to get started with because most people can build it. And a lot of these parts are easy to find. And most of the parts you could source locally. This video is mainly going to cover how to build this stuff though. And we have a solar panel and a battery for demonstration purposes, but this is not the right size battery and this is not the right size solar panel. So for this size system, what I recommend is two 100 watt solar panels wired in series connected to the solar charge controller and a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery such as a Battleborn or two 100 amp hour AGM seal lead acid. And even though this system is very small and you can literally lift it up with one hand, you can actually scale this system really nicely. And if you use the components I recommend on the website, you can turn this into a 24 volt system. But I did build this system with parts that were laying around, so I would not use the Rover solar charge controller and I would not use a modified sine wave inverter. So please check out my website to see what I currently recommend. And even though this is a very small and simple system. You can scale this system and you can upgrade parts very easily. So compared to a solar generator, you have a lot more options for expandability. So let's say you want to swap out for a 24 volt system. This fuse box and this MPPT works with 24 volts. So all you'd have to do is swap out the battery and the inverter, but that would take minutes to do. Also, if you go up to a 24 volt system, instead of 200 watts, this thing can pull in 500 watts. So keep that in mind, if you want to upgrade to a 24 volt system with this system in the future, it's very easy to do. Just swap out the batteries and swap out the inverter. And I think a lot of people will love this size because it's so small, it fits in a van, everybody can build it, it's really easy to build. Yeah, I hope you guys like this video and let's start building it. First up is to mount all of these components to the board with some screws. <laughs> Now we have the circuit fuse mounted, but I was looking at this MPPT and we want the solar panel wires to come down here and into here. So that means instead of having it in the middle of the board, we're gonna have it slightly offset over here so that the negative will have less distance to the bus bar and it will look nicer. And then I put a little screw right here so that it won't slide off this way and pop off because of how the mounts are situated. Most inverters you screw it into the piece of wood, but this one doesn't have that. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to hold it down with. Use some mounting tape and see how well that holds. I can't find anything. I was gonna use some plumber's tape or something, but that's gonna look even stupider than this. So I'm just gonna use electrical tape. But most inverters on the market, you screw it into the board. So you usually shouldn't have this problem. Now we can actually wire it up. It came with these, let's see, uh, eight gauge wires I thought they were six gauge and we can connect the inverter first to this fuse box just like that and typically you don't want a lot of bending but this will do especially at this wire gauge now let's do the negative so I think right about here will work so I just busted out my box of terminal connectors and I have a connector that fits on this stud and it connects to this wire it's the proper gauge so this will work perfect so first we're gonna strip the insulation off of this wire and it should look like this. Now you can put it inside the terminal connector and see if it fits. And considering how much bend we have in this, we need to make sure that the orientation is correct. So when we crimp it, it needs to be here. It can't be over here or like this. It needs to be perfect, just like that. We have a hammer type crimp and we can finish this crimp connection. So just stick it in there and then you whack it with a hammer. And after you crimp it, you can add heat shrink. And it should end up looking like that. Now we can test if it is a good wire or not. And that looks perfect, really nice. And repeat the same exact process over here. First we crimp it, and now we need to add heat shrink. This is what it looks like when you put the cover back on with both wires. It looks very clean and nice. In most systems, I would not have these loops sticking out, but these little connectors that they have, you can't really, you can't have it down here unless it will bend it too much and you can't have it going sideways. So I'm kind of stuck with putting it this way, unfortunately. The easy part, we need to connect this solar charge controller to this fuse box. 
And because this is a 20 amp solar charge controller, if you multiply that by 1.25, it gives us 25 and we have a 25 amp fuse installed right here. So this is the terminal that we need to connect to this. First thing you want to do is find a 10 gauge wire and put one of these connectors on with your ratcheting crimper. And then I heated up the heat shrink. So this is a basic one you can find at any store. And then we need to install it in the fuse box and then see how we need to bend this wire because it's a very tight fit. So I'm going to mark it with a marker on where I think it will go in and where it needs to be cut for the installation. And now you need to loosen the solar charge controller terminal all the way so this fire wire fits all the way in there. And it actually fits perfectly. That is ridiculous. If you guys are building this right now, make sure that you have at least a couple inches space like it should be a little bit further away. That was a little difficult. Now you need to check and feel to make sure it's in there solid. God, that's perfect. Now we need to connect the negative of the fuse box to the negative of this. So let's see how difficult that is. So I have a 10 gauge wire and we're gonna connect it to this one and then see how much room we have. And this one's a little bit more flexible of a situation than the last time. So it should fit just about right here. And now that it's measured and cut, we just have to stick this in the hole and tighten it down. It's like that and then check it to make sure it's in there solid. And that's it, we have the wiring done for this system. That's incredible. All right guys, talk about minimal losses. This is such a small amount of wire to connect these two components together. Now we need to connect some power lines to our battery. And I have this four gauge cable. You can buy four gauge battery cables at any Walmart or wherever you're at. Now we need to put the cover on and make sure everything fits. Let's check it out. It looks really good. I love this design. It's very simple and small and lightweight. You can lift it with one hand and stuff it in the back of a closet. Now I added a positive and a negative line to an XT60 connector that supplies MC4 adapters. And so this means I can connect any little solar panel to this system. This system is rated for 200 watts though, so that's the maximum amount of power I can push through these. That's it guys, tomorrow we can hook it up to some sunshine and a battery. Guys, today is the big day that we're gonna hook this thing up to some solar power, but we need to talk about the fuse sizing and gauge of wire that we're using. So we have four gauge, and this goes to eight gauge, and this is made for this tiny inverter. So for this system, we can size the main bolt-on fuse, this fuse right here that goes to the battery, for this cable right here and for this inverter because this fuse box can handle whatever we throw at it and this gauge of wire is really big so this can handle like 100 to 150 amp fuse sizing but we have this weak link right here but this is made for this inverter and because it's a 750 watt inverter we will divide it by 12 volts and we get 62.5 then we multiply it by 1.25 and that will give us the fuse size of 78 and so for this system, we could use like an 80 amp fuse as the main fuse, but because we're also sharing it with the fuse box and because this wire is so incredibly short, it would be able to trip a 100 amp fuse if I had it all over here. So for this system, if you guys are copying it 100%, what you wanna do is have a 100 amp fuse and you will be good. If you are using a lot of power from the fuse box or you have a larger inverter, you will have to size it accordingly for that system. So let's say you have a 1500 watt inverter, you divide it by 12, you get 125 amps, and then we multiply it by 1.25, and then you get 156. For inverters though, you might have a huge surge if you're doing induction loads. And if this doesn't make sense to you, please check out my book on fuse sizing and wire gauge because this is a really big topic. So yeah, for this system though, I would say 100 amp fuse would be great right here. This is what the fuse should look like bolted on. You can see that the terminal connector on my cable, the thick cable that goes over here, is flush with this bolt-on fuse. There is no washers between it. There isn't a washer on the outside because the hole is really big, but you want these two surfaces, the copper, to be flush with each other. Typically, I just use these MC4 connectors for demonstration purposes, but if you have solar panels like an array of 200 watts, put them in series. If you have this MPPT charge controller or the one I recommend on my website, put them on series and then have some extension cables and put them directly in here. You do not need this, you do not need this. Just have them feed directly into here. But what is smart to do though is to hold the solar panel cables down with one of these with one of these little cable holders that you screw into the board. Now we get to put it all together. And when you put these connectors on a battery, make sure that it is flush with the terminal. 
So you wanna put it flat on there and have no washers between the fuse and the connector and the battery terminal. For this one, the hole is too big for this fuse, so I'm using, so I'm using a nut as a washer. And when you hook up the second wire and complete the circuit, there will be a spark because this inverter has capacitors that need to charge up. So, actually this inverter is so small that I had no sparks. And again, you want this connector flush with the battery terminal. You want that copper to be only touching the battery terminal. So if you look at the solar charge controller, you will see that we have 13.6 volts and that's the battery voltage and it shows nighttime mode. So there's no power coming in right now. You can also test out our inverter. And a green light just illuminated, and so this thing is on and working. Now that this system's connected to the battery, we can finally hook it up to solar panels. I angled the solar panel to the sun because it's a super cloudy day and it's literally about to rain, and we actually have power. We have a one amp going in, but this battery is full. So we need to put a load on this inverter, deplete the battery, and then it will start charging up. Because if the battery is full, it's not gonna need any power from the solar panels and it will turn off that power. But yeah, this thing works, isn't that cool? So now we wanna load test this system to make sure that it works. So I hooked up a 750 watt heat gun when it's on its lowest setting to the inverter. And when you turn it on, it should work really well and you wanna feel these wires while it's running and make sure that nothing is getting warm check all of your connectors. And if something gets really hot, you need to replace it. And as you deplete the battery, more power will be collected by the solar panel and converted into electricity. Okay, it's raining, so we have to go back inside right now. But yeah, this system works, so I hope you guys like this video. And what I love most about this system is it's so small. Look at this, you can hold it in your hand. But if you guys buy a bigger inverter in a pure sine wave inverter, like I recommend on my website, it's gonna be bigger and it will extend about down to here. But you should be able to fit this whole system on a plank of wood or a small piece of plywood, no problem. So I really hope you guys liked watching this system be built. If you wanna learn anything more about it, please check out my website and my book. There's a lot more information covering this stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later, bye.